What's going? Spaghetti. Spaghetti? I'm sure. Flying spaghetti monster. And this guy. That's my god. I'm proud of you. Okay. Let us begin. Since you have all the notes. Oh, I do have all the notes. And I'm my notes are in here and okay. not up. So let's <laughs> clarify first off that your argument your argument within your paper kind of fluctuates because you are an examination of morality and fairness in primates. And so your argument is that morality is not inherently an evolutionary characteristic, but rather a redefining of behavioral traits that, that we can say evolves, but not in the biological definition, that it evolves as a species becomes more aware or defines different characteristics that we as humans have defined as morality. That's fairly accurate, yes. Okay. So, obviously I disagree with that in a various systems, um, but one of the first things that I think I would like to point out is that within your first paragraph, you quote that morality and fairness is a uniquely human quality. And then you go on to try and prove this point amongst other points in that your key study revolves solely around chimpanzees. My initial quote was more for flavor than the truth of the matter. This is a biological paper. We're not going for flavor. I like flavor. I mean, mine was politically based and that has a lot of flavor in it, but most of mine was quantitative. My... Uh, my quote was that um, morality and fairness was uniquely human trait comes from a separate source than the actual paper. Um, my argument is that morality and fairness is not necessarily a trait, but in fact is a learned behavior based upon um, cooperative society. Cooperative society. All right. Which so, does directly relate to primates. With, uh, yeah, no one's, I'm not denying that that doesn't stem from primates, but that is an example of that is an example that contradicts your statement that it's a human quality. No. Yes. W at what point did I say that? Uh, yeah, I okay, I do, I do, I do state that chim chimpanzees do do in fact have a, a process of fairness. Right. Um, but the quote is more centered on morality. That's so you so within your you didn't define morality except you didn't define morality. I used a Webster's definition. The only definition you didn't even provide the definition. All you did was Merriam-Webster dictionary cites it as one of the top ten percent most popular words in the English language, and you go on. But you didn't define no. Well, there you, the concept of right and wrong behavior, I guess. There we that's, go. That's the definition. That's the definition. But right and wrong is a. Very subjective term, yes. Correct, but... And due to that s highly subjective nature of the term of morality, I don't believe that it could have possibly evolved because it's based upon behavioral ideals that are formed in a cooperative society. All right, so let's go... I, I want to focus on the cooperative part of society in that if, okay. if you look at, like, for instance, cooperation in other species, we can look at perhaps wolves or pack mentalities like in orcas and killer whales. Yes. That there is inherently parts of their brains that are looked at okay. that deal with higher levels of intelligence. Okay. And those different parts of the brain, those different genomes and genetics that influence the evolution of a brain come from a re they you, inherently you don't form a pack mentality amongst an entire species out of nowhere right. it evolves right. from something and that doesn't that, and if we're going on the basis that humans are necessarily one of the only species that are known to have a conscientious <laughs> understanding of self and um, other members of a group then you would inherently think that a species would start out with being singular in terms of trying to fight for their survival. So something has to happen in there that finds that working together makes it more successful to be 
to it is more successful uh, successful to be cooperative within a species rather than being on one being solo and aiming to be like a lone wolf in terms of survival and that can be a behavioral trait sure but that's yes a, it is a behavioral trait it's a behavior but it's a behavioral trait that's a, that has been evolved because the evolution is based upon the concept of fairness which then lends itself to be cooperative, which then lends itself to morality, which then in our specific situation can lend itself to political direction. Right. Okay. But with for the political direction, then if we're focusing on that for the time being, my study shows distinct genetic and biological differences. No, 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 no. no. Your, your study says there is one specific gene that is found in a lot of liberals, they don't give a specific number, mm -hmm. um, that shows that that person likes new things. Right. I'm not Just because I like new things doesn't make me liberal or conservative. No, no, no. I'm not, that's not my key study, though. That was just an example of, there's multiple studies being conducted right now. And okay. Because of the science, nothing can be confirmed until multiple studies have, you know, gone through the whole right. surveying process. So you know, if, the study that I'm focusing on is the one relating to the different sizes and um, connections to the brain differentiation. Certainly. And as you grow up and as you learn and live, different areas of the brain that have more use uh, grow in size. This is a proven fact in science that as you use specific uh, connections in, in your brain, those connections strengthen and have more... Um, more prevalence as you continue to use them. So, of course, liberals and conservatives have different fundamental viewpoints, and as they're taught those different fundamental viewpoints, their different portions of their brain fire as such, and that is what leads to different sized portions of brains, not necessarily a specific gene. Now, if you can, if you can pull open the genes of a liberal person and a conservative person and find a specific gene that controls the growth of those areas of the brain and can point that to me and say this gene grows this specific portion which then causes this specific person to have a more liberal point of view then absolutely you're onto something however you cannot point to one specific gene that grows one specific portion of the brain. You cannot then prove that that growth of that one specific portion of the brain leads to a behavioral differentiation of political views. And then you also cannot generalize and say that that one specific point of view then relates to an entirely abstract notion of liberalism versus conservatism. So, to backtrack just a bit, the whole idea that, I mean, yes, the the way we use a brain strengthens and can differentiate based on how you use it, but that lends itself to the idea of that it would be evolutionarily that. No, the, the brain strengthens no, 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 no. behaviorally, not evolutionary. The, the brain changes based on your different behaviors. It's an incredible organ and I suggest that you study more into it because as, as you as you use certain specific portions of your brain it um, that that was yeah you're that gonna was edit fun. that out you're gonna edit that out yeah I probably will uh, <laughs> no, cause I'm gonna that was this. sassy no no it's it's, no. I'm, it's not gonna be an audio form it's gonna be typed right I know so I'm gonna you're gonna share it with me yeah and then I'm gonna circumvent and look at it to make sure you're not putting anything no, 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 in there no no I, I would be. never cheat cheating is oh, cheating is mean please. I'm going to leave that one in. <laughs> but yeah, as you, and then as you, um, as you use specific portions of the brain, they uh, strengthen those connections. This, this is why musicians have specific portions of their brain that are differently sized than, say, you know, uh, a mathematician, right? Because they use different areas on a day-to-day -day basis. Politicians must have gigantic spinal cords. Again, you're going to edit that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a supposed to be an honors paper. Yeah. I find humor honorable. Anyway, okay. So we're going to go... So your whole argument, then, is that because... 
We're good. Okay. It's still gonna pick you up, I okay. promise, because it's still face facing you. So, in, so the whole reason that you oppose the idea that morality or other behavioral traits that humans have adapted are not evolutionarily stemmed is only solely based off the fact that certain be that behaviors are not genetic and, then, and therefore yes. cannot be quantified as evolution. Uh, sort of. Yeah. Now. Yes, well, because we're doing a, a thing. Oh, okay. It's already it's lost. Not. I already checked. Um, well, this time I didn't want to move the chair, so I checked. Um, my argument is that your argument does not have any specific evidentiary portion that proves that this has been evolved. And evolution relates to a specific change in a genome that then changes a phenotype based upon natural, sexual, or behavioral selection. There is no reason, that, I mean, that conservatives, yes, mostly would find more conservatives sexually attractive, and liberals would probably find liberals more sexually attractive. However, that does not necessarily breed a reason for there to be a separation in those genotypes, and leads me to believe there is not a separation in those genotypes. It may not be a separation as of yet, but that would, I mean, think of the... the then what's going to cause the separation? Well, we're already seeing a polarization of politics as is. I'm not saying that this is how... Evolutionarily speaking, this is going to happen over generations of time. We're only beginning to see true identifications between conservative and liberal kind of politics in the modern era of humanity because now we have labels for those. And as such, those studies are now only beginning to be brought forth. So while I, to, to your point, I do not have genetic code, genome, DNA differences as evidence as such, and therefore I'm say it should be led to skepticism. skepticism. Yes, exactly. I'm not denying that there shouldn't be some form of skepticism, and I'm certainly not saying that the study is completely finished. However, there needs to be some form of open-mindedness in regards to it, where the, the uh, evidence that exists as of now lends itself to suggest that there would be some form of difference in an evolutionary sense, whether this comes from genetic evolution and or social behavior evolution that in turn can affect the way a brain works. Mm -hmm. to, no, 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 because to your point, you're right. The way we use our brain becomes will change the way that it appears. So if a liberal is using more um, parts of the brain than another, it will become larger, it will become stronger. But if though those traits then, if they are being selected for liberals, as you said, becoming more sexually selective for other liberals, Republicans becoming more sexually selected for Republicans, those sort of traits become what is expected. Now, I, I want to I want to look at some terms here because you're using Republican and conservative I'm, very interchangeably. And are you aware that yes, a long time ago those Republicans were actually Democrats as we know them today? So I mean, just the terminology aspect could uh, be touched up a little bit. But in general, um, you're, you're talking about liberalism versus conservatism, right? Yes. And you're talking about, you said it, it's behaviorally based, which is my entire point, because behaviors are not evolved. Behaviors can come from evolutionary traits like fairness that leads to cooperation, that leads to morality, that leads to a sense of right and wrong, that then leads to, I have a political ideal. However, Political ideals are not the evolutionary root, and that is the sole problem with your argument. I know. Repeat that last part for me. <laughs> Politics are not the evolutionary root, and that is your sole problem. Right. I yes, so I agree. Right. I'm right. <laughs> I'm editing so much of what you're going to write down. Don't worry. It's uh, not going to be as sassy as it sounds. You need, I need it to not be. Because, no. I never said that political... No. Then you might have misunderstood me. Okay, then help me understand. I need so much to not type out. Because, no. Anyway, no. Because I never said political ide ideology was the root of the evolutionary... Then what did you say? Well, I, what I said... Out loud, or what I said in my what, paper. What, what is 
if it's not the root, if if evolution is not the evolutional root, or, or excuse me, if political viewpoint is not an evolutionary root, then where is it? Where, where is political ideology? Yeah, I mean, I, I've set it out, in my opinion, very clearly, where morality evolved, or no, excuse me, fairness evolved, which then leads to cooperation, which then leads to morality, which then leads to right and wrong, which then leads to political ideals. Where does that sit? Where Where is your evolutionary continuum? Okay. And where does it lead to behavioralism? This appears to be, at least from the evidence I've seen thus far, results in the fact that there's a, one of the, I wish I had my freaking paper out with me, is that one of the studies looked at the ways in which, now from a psychological standpoint, this is behavioral, but I'm getting to it, okay. in that conservatives tend to react more, tend to hold more anxiety in relation to uh problems that they face, especially on the national level, as we can see in the way that their current policies as conservatives are enacting, you know, the, how they react to those. What? Okay. Didn't and, say anything. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> I didn't say anything. So can't tell me to shut up if I didn't say anything. Uh, but, yeah, it's good. Yeah, write that piece out. <laughs> There's also a portion in here that you said, I'm right. I think I'm going to clip that sound bite. So this is an honors, honors project. project. In bio. We are, we, so we wrote two evolutionary papers. Mine I, arguing the fact that politics may stem from an evolutionary... No, um, your, your exact evolved. words at the beginning of the semester were politics have evolved. That's not what I wrote, though. You can only go based off what I wrote. This is everything else is off the record, and I'm going to say that social creation are, lends itself into politics. Is that what are these my quotes? This is exactly what I wrote on my post-it note when we decided to do this, and I approved it with you after I wrote it. What did you write? <laughs> arguing Kirsten P. Arguing social creation lends itself into politics. Okay. AJB arguing social creation ends at fairness. Okay. And by social creation, I mean the evolution of social creation. Choo, 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 no. motherfucker. So yeah, he's arguing <laughs> I'm that... I'm putting that one in. <laughs> he's arguing that fairness is, and morality are social behaviors that evolved humanistically, not genetically. Behaviorally. But behaviorally. My argument is that morality and Wrong. politics <laughs> Sorry. are that are the result of what could possibly be a genetic difference in the ways that conservatives and liberals have possibly evolved over time, stemming from different but from differences in their approach to. So. Can you explain like? Liberal kids with conservative parents. Then. I would also that I mean I was gonna that that was my sucker punch. That was what I was gonna end with. Come on. Also, um. Oh geez, now I lost my train of thought. That was my sucker punch. That was my sucker punch. You took my sucker punch. Um. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, what about the genetics of freaking blue eyes, brown eyes? Like, that's a low-level comparison, but you can have, but parents who have brown eyes... So which is, so liberals are dominant? <laughs> 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 Congress disagrees with you. <laughs> okay, um, no, my, my, my question for you, though, is whenever evolution takes place, and stop me if you disagree with anything I say. I disagree with everything you say. <laughs> I'll get that sound bite for you. Um, all right. Um, now, when evolution takes place, no, I'm I'm just gonna state some very basic things, and then I'm gonna sucker punch. So, when when evolution, I'm warning you. When evolution takes place, it's because there's a reason, correct? No. Everything. 
thing we have learned thus far in evolution is that it stems from a mutation. Right. And that is the reason. That's my that's my okay, that's my so portion, you're, right? You're saying reason. It's there is a like there is a life. reason whether it's genetic drift, whether it's completely okay. random, whether it's natural selection, sexual selection, behavioral selection. Okay. There is a specific reason. Okay. No, no, we we got yeah, this one. Got, got got <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> so <laughs> when when it there is a specific reason for it. Now, when evolution occurs, we're doing a, a recording of a project for bio. When evolution occurs, there is a specific reason for it. Now, I know, but I'm trying to keep my train of thought choo-chewing. Um, and politics, you're arguing, stems from a specific Not politics specifically, political, ideology. political ideology, then, s extends from a evolutionary perspective. Yes. So... What portion of known evolution did political ideology stem from? Is it is conservatism a random mutation? Is liberalism a random mutation? Is the Green Party a random mutation? Is it a behaviorally select... What advantage is there to having a political ideology from an evolutionary standpoint? Because... If this is your argument, and am I am I correct so far? That's far from as okay. Much as yeah, yeah, thoughts. absolutely. Then you can't have liberalism evolve and conservatism evolve because there has to be one specific overarching idea that there is a political ideology. So your your argument was that political ideology evolves. So the there must be some form of advantage, then, evolutionarily, to have a political ideology. So, where, because otherwise, why would that have evolved? It would just be a learned behavioral trait, exactly as I'm arguing. So, your, your turn. Convince me, convince me that political ideology has an evolutionary advantage using some portion of known evolution. Huh? That's actually really funny. Well, because there's a lot of things that are <laughs> gonna be cut out. <laughs> DJ is sassy as fuck. Oh I yeah, I'm sassy. the only one to blame for that. Yes. <laughs> and I heard a lot, and then this is gonna get transcribed and turned in for an honors project. No, I think you guys should just turn in raw. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be No, okay. No, no, no. In 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 a year, I will send him the raw file. <laughs> <laughs> you just have five years to change your opinions. Okay, so in six years. <laughs> no. Or I'll, or I'll send it to Doug and say, this is funny, watch it. <laughs> we can send it to him now. Anyway, my question. Do you like to provide an answer? Okay, so just to catch you up. He believes political ideologies stem from fairness, like the fairness traits and crap that you get. Kirsten believes that it's part of your genetics. No. Go. That's exactly what you That's think. exactly <laughs> what I've gotten from this. <laughs> it just has to be more behavioralism. Yes, my, which is exactly what she said. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so in terms of evolutionarily advantageous ideas to having what we would consider now to be political ideology, has expanded upon what it would have been in early, you know, hominid days, and that looking at perhaps a conservative approach is that they are more fearful, they are more ang they have more anxiety in terms of how they react. Like I mentioned but, earlier, I'm continuing. Let me make a point. Okay. But um, so to that regard, those who would practice more conservative. Um, I don't know, behaviors or... No, that's not the word I'm looking for. No, behaviors. 
I don't <laughs> let her get her fuck cut out. I don't like that she's talking. I, I'm just... I'll take out everything Katie says. I'm just pointing out the major flaws in Kirsten's oh. arguments. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that one in. I'm just pointing out the major flaws in Kirsten's argument. I know. <laughs> don't don't die. <laughs> oh, it's it's recording. Yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna transcribe it. I thought it would be better to get it live and then. I think I think this is a breakdown. There's no video. Yeah, I didn't turn my webcam on. Yeah, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, I'm sorry. Choo choo oh. choo, left the station. Okay. <laughs> but, um, All aboard. Oh, conservatism. Once you find your train of thought, please send me a ticket. I want to hear it. I think I'm railing you. <laughs> I think I did that in my thing. Did you? I don't know. I read it at 2 in the morning and I read it twice. I just read yours like a minute ago. I put a WTF on there just to let you know. Yeah, would you like that? Where is it? There you go. That's from Anna. So by that definition, a conservative who practices someone who is being more conservative would survive longer in that they are, if they are more anxious or they are more hesitant in getting involved in certain things or they are more, this isn't just conservatives, I'm just talking about the way people, you know, liberal versus conservatives. Okay. If you are acting in that way, that's going to somehow either, that's going to help your survival one way or another. If liberals are inherently those who are going to be looking out for more, uh, what was the word? looking for different experiences, looking for new things, those would be the innovators, those would be the ones that would develop ways in which for the society or the species to improve, and conservatives would therefore be more into in tune with protecting the species, being cautious, being careful, etc. And so when you and so the whole point of evolution is that you want you you those who survive are those who get to reproduce, and those who reproduce pass those down those genes, pass down those those adaptive traits, adaptive characteristics. I mean, if we're going to talk about you know evolution in terms of behaviors, and that behaviors are somehow not linked to evolution, we can talk about our whole caterpillar fun fiasco that just was because a large part of the though we didn't test it had to do with the behavioral traits of caterpillars those who would nest those who would thrash about when dealing with a bird and those who would i don't know what was the other one oh selective feeding feeding off the leaves at the bottom of the branch so you can't negate that's my that's been the point i'm trying to been trying to get to you can't okay. negate that social behaviors are not an evolutionarily passed down thing, while they may not in turn be genetically based, that doesn't mean that they are not evolved traits. Because there is no genetics that we can look to that says why a caterpillar would thrash about in order to protect itself, other than it is learned, other than it is somehow been passed down through the species, whether that is learned, whether that is genetic, but there is something that is common within the species or common within different parts of the species that do different things. And so those are learned or genetic behaviors, but that does not signify that they are not inherently evolved. So a conservative ideology may be of that same vein in that it may be learned, it may be genetic, but either way, it served an evolutionary purpose of survival at one point versus another, and has since compounded upon itself to become what we identify today as a conservative ideology or a liberal ideology. Okay. So, I have... What? I got one, so lost. <laughs> one, I, I follow you. I followed you. Now, my, my initial reaction to that statement is that my question was, what advantage does having an evolved political ideology have? Now, you did list some wonderful adaptations that humans have, having a, a careful persona, or being uh, creative, or, yeah, I know, 
are very um, are, are human characteristics, absolutely. However, my argument would be that they are not inherently political characteristics. Perhaps not inherent here. I will con I will contend that point that they may not be inherently political, but lend themselves to the political ide ideology themselves, and in turn become those political ideologies. I think that's good. I think that's okay. good to word. I think I like having the last word. Yeah, I know.